What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you. And today we're gonna to be unboxing and just doing a brief overview of Presonus' latest audio interface in the Revelator range. This is the Revelator IO44. I'm probably gonna get the name confused with the IO24 that I've been using for about seven, eight months now for most of this video. Um, now this isn't just a mini version of this audio interface, although this only has one XLR input. It's got a couple of other cool, really nifty tricks that I do think that maybe streamers and content creators are going to be a little bit more interested in if you're someone that's never really going to use your second XLR input. It also features the same DSP and all the routing as their Revelator mic, the Revelator dynamic microphone and the IO24. So I'm just going to briefly show you what you can do in today's video. We'll do a quick software overview but I will link in the comment section um, all of my guides in regards to setting up the DSP, doing all the routing, um, a couple of wicked things you can do with Studio One as well. Um, so I'll talk about that throughout the video and I will show you it briefly, but I'm not too sure if we're going to do another loop back and DSP guide because I've made so many now, um, especially with all the sort of firmware updates, tweaks and changes and all of that stuff. But really interested to see this audio interface. I'm really looking forward to having a little play with it. As you can see, we've got it on the front of the box here. You've got Revelator IO44, USB compatible audio interface, compatible with Windows and Mac. It also comes with the Studio One software free as well. Um, but to control this, you actually use the universal control. There we go. It's for streamers, gamers, and musicians. Then you're going to love what Personas have been doing for the last 25 years. Loopback mixer. You know, all the DSP and that sort of stuff. And then there is a sort of like where you're going to plug everything into drawn on this as well. Let's have a look inside the box there. We have the IO44. Yeah, got it right that time. So that's good. Let's see what else is in the box as well. <sighs> Still annoyed personas. So there's the manual and all of that sort of stuff. To get all the extra software, you just register it on the Personas website. But I'm still annoyed that you're only including a USB-C to type A cable. Please start including both cables. The fact that on this cheaper Studio 24C, you include both cables. Do you know what I mean? What If I wanted to plug this straight into the Mac, I'm going to have to buy extra cables or use a dongle. Okay, but that's about it. That's what's all that's in the box. Wow, it's tiny. It's absolutely tiny. Should we do some sticker pulling? I can't see the camera at the moment, so I don't know if I'm completely looking at it. Then it's got all about registering your products here. Download universal control. Oh, a little bit of residue there. Wow. It's just like a mini. Let's have a look. Let's bring this little bad boy into shot. There we go. If you just want a little comparison there, there's the IO24 with the IO44. I like the shape. Let's just before we go around all the sides of it that if I'm putting that further back on my desk, I can't see that screen there. Not that I use this screen for too much monitoring, but it's, you know, it's it's still there um, and it's still incredibly useful. I would have preferred a wedge shape, but then the problem with the wedge shape is then you can't plug in the microphone cable. So I sort of get it. Um, you know, when you've got something that is this small. Now, it does feel nice quality. It feels like it's using the same metal with the sort of perforated edges on it. It's a very solid unit. It's not super light, but it's not too heavy either. We're on the bottom. And there you go. So on the back here, we have the USB-C um, and then we have the main out. Um, so these are combi jacks. And then over to the front here, don't know if you can read what's written on there. Um, we have mic instrument. OK, so this is 60 dB of gain if you are using microphone input. So if you're going with the um, XLR input there, you get 60 dB of gain. I've had no issues powering an SM7B before I sold my SM7B on the IO24. You also have an instrument input as well here. So you get 50 dB get of gain when you do that as well. Both have frequency responses of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now, this is where it gets quite interesting. Love that we've got the headphone jack over the front. A little bit annoyed that it's only a 3.5 millimeter one. But the great thing about this is this is a combo headset input. And the thing that I really like about this was if you wanted to get, say, an IO24 and a microphone, but you couldn't afford it at once, chances are you might be wanting that microphone so much you end up just buying a USB mic. 
that you don't particularly want. You know, you buy something else because, you know, you, you just need something, you need a solution. But if you already had a gaming headset with an OK microphone on it, you could use all of the loopbacks. You can use all of the DSP and you can apply it to the headset channel. And I think that's absolutely fantastic that you can do that, meaning you could just buy this, start off with this, for example, the IO44, and then maybe a month or two later, you could buy yourself a microphone. You can get the PD70 really cheap now. And, you know, as someone that really likes the Revelator Dynamic Microphone, one thing I didn't like about it, which I know personas are looking into at the moment, was the self-noise on it. So for me, my recommendations would probably be something like either one of these two in a PD70, if you like the sound of that Revelator Dynamic Microphone at the moment. Now, there is also a line input as well, 3.5 millimeter line input. Um, no, that one, and that one is 40 dB of gain. From looking through the manual, I don't think you can apply the DSP to the line in. Um, I'd really like if you could change it. I understand that maybe you could only have DSP on two channels, but let's just say I wasn't using that headset input and I didn't want DSP on there. We'll, we'll have a look at the software in the moment, but for the manual, I don't think you can. I would like to say I don't want the DSP here and I want to apply the DSP to the line in. For example, I could then plug in maybe a cheap Behringer or Mackie mixer and maybe set up a bit of a podcast. And although I would prefer to give everyone their main independent compression gate and EQ, at least then I could just set, you know, just a really light one for all of the for the mixer that's coming in. So it is getting some light compression. It is getting a light bit of EQ, maybe some hot spots in the room, um, you know, and then also a noise gate as well. You can kind of set that, you know, a good setting for the four people or, you know, two people you'd have talking on that. Up to the top here, we'll, we'll have a look at it in a second as well. But there seems to be a mute button, which I think the mute only mutes the main out, which I know is a big gripe to loads of people. We look like we've got a couple of switch buttons here, presets and your volume dial. So I think we need to get this plugged in so we can have a proper look at the front. Just stand it up like that for a moment because we haven't got a microphone plugged into it. So it, I've just plugged it in and it wants me to update the firmware straight away on universal control. And it's gonna switch off for a second. One thing to know as well, when you're installing this on a Mac, um, when you get to this, there's like a control panel before you get into the universal control. You need to set that to multi to get all of your loopback channels. So I don't know if you'll be able to see that here. It says single and I'm just going to set it to multi and then we can click in. So we've got this all set up. It's done its firmware update. I'll show you the software briefly in a minute as well, because what we want to look at, I'm going to just slide this out of the way a little bit is I want to see what all of these do. So it's a little bit different on the IO44 here for the screen. I actually quite like it compared to the IO24. So you can see we have these arrow buttons here. So at the moment we're on the home screen, okay? So if there was gain coming in, you would see it here. And then there are the free inputs. So you've got the microphone, the headset, and the line input. Now, if you press this middle one here, it's going to switch between, that's your speakers, which is just the volume, your headphone output, and then you've got your blend as well. So this is a blend between real-time monitoring and USB monitoring, okay? Um, so that's what those options do there. Now, quite the cool thing is with the page scrolling here. So like I said, this is the home screen. And now I just want to show you an example here on like the XLR connection. And it'd be the same if you scroll through to either headset or lining. Um, lining's a little bit different. Um, so we'll get to that in a second. So you would have your dB meters on the gain here. And then there is also this extra little line. If I just turn the gate on there, you can see that's showing me that it's being gated at the moment as well. So that's really cool. Um, it only lasts a few seconds though. So I want to see if you can change that in the settings in a second now if you press the middle one you can then adjust your gain from here okay and then if you tap it again you can turn on 48 volts of phantom power or you can turn it off and then also as well you can turn on or off your 80 hertz high pass um high pass filter on as well i'd really like if you could click into the high pass filter and then just adjust the value of that but there we can see the gain goes all the way up to 60 db there now on the headset, obviously we don't have 48 volts of phantom power because it's kind of like a line in. You can see there we've got that the gate is on, so it's fully gated that. Um, and again, you can change the gain on here as well, all the way up to whoa, 60 dB of headphone gain there as well. So yeah, it's weird. It's like they've just put a different, different connect on the end of it. And then for the line input, all you have on here, if you can't see this on screen, do apologize you can just do it to minus 12 and plus 12 dB. Okay, so should we plug this in and have a little look? Oh, I forgot to say, because my hand was over it. Also, yes, you've got the mute button is there. 
I forgot to say as well, there's the mute button as well, which is the global mute button, um, which you can find. Also, don't know if I've already mentioned it because my hand was over it the whole time. There is also the mute button for the main out. So should we plug it in? We'll take a quick little look at the software. I'm going to plug the Rode NTG3 into this as well, which was the microphone we were using for this unboxing. So the software is pretty much virtually identical to the IO24 and the Revelator microphones. OK, um, just the extra thing that you've got here is this is obviously now a headset microphone, which, like I said earlier, would be great if you, you know, you want this interface, but you can't afford a mic at the same time. You could just use your headset mic for a month or two until you can get yourself that nice microphone and you've got the line in as well. Now I went into the settings here and I can't see, as you can see, fat channels are only on USB stream outputs. Oh no, that's stream outputs. But I can't see anywhere in here where you can change it to the line in. I think that you should just be able to, you know, I'm never gonna plug a headset microphone in here. So I would much prefer to be able to put my DSP here on the line in. Another great thing you can actually do on these USB outputs is you can set a output delay. Um, so you can set an output delay on this, which is really useful. Very useful if you're sending it over to say like um, Zoom or Teams. So you can make basically make your audio sync up with your camera. And whether it's a webcam or even if you're plugging in a higher end camera, you can do that stuff. And then you can decide what preset buttons you've got on here. And then you've got channel mute switch, um, sync as well. So when you have that on, if I do mute here on virtual A, you can see it's muted him on all of them. As in, if I now turn that off and go up, you can see, you know, it's just a global mute there, but there isn't a complete global mute, which I know a lot of people, a lot of people complain about. Okay. So up at the top here, you've got all of the presets. So I can just become a robot. Vintage channel. Um, so this is going to be sort of a vintage channel. And as you, as you turn all this vintage stuff on, you can see how it, it changes everything up here, essentially. And then we'll just bring it back to, to my one. Um, now, it, all you have to do is essentially click on one of these preset buttons here and then spin it to the one you want. And that basically sets it. And then in here, there's loads of predefined stuff. So there's like um, gates, compressors, limiters, all that sort of stuff um, that you can turn on. I've not got a compressor because I'm just going to compress it afterwards. But yeah, you've got all these sort of presets in here and they're OK, but they're not that great, but they're good. You can set it to it and then come into the fat channel and see what it's done and then tweak it to suit. Now over to the fat channel, you have a high pass filter. You have a gate, which I prefer to use as an expander. And that is definitely not the gated settings that I like to use. That should be probably about there is where I like to go for the gate. But again, I'm probably going to apply all that stuff afterwards. Now you have three types of compressor. So there's your standard compressor that you've got here. And then there is also a tube compressor, which I really like. That's the one I generally use for going out live. So that's based on an LL2A, I think. And then there is a FET compressor. The only annoying thing is here, if we just turn this on, dial that up a little bit and put a bit more gain in there. Um, and then I go over to FET one and then come back over to the tube, you can see it's disappeared. So what I always do is when I'm uh, building profiles, um, every time you make a change, so save one and then I just bring it over to a second one. It will make sense when you start to use it. And again, with EQ, so we've got passive and then there is also a vintage EQ as well. So let me go back to my standard EQ and look, it's gone. So I need to come off this, come back on it. Then you can see that my EQ has been turned back on. You've also got a limiter and you can do some voice effects as well. Now you can save all of the profiles here. So you can save them here. And here's all my local presets that got pulled over from my Revelator IO24. It's got that one right. I'm, I'm really surprised because I was really worried about messing the names up of these two all the time and getting them the wrong way around. But you can save local presets. Now this thing's really useful here because this is scenes. So although presets will set your values that you have your audio set to, they're not going to set where your routing is um, and they're not going to set all of your routing options so by storing it here as you can see i've got one for my video mic and my re320 i press the re320 and it loads up everything exactly how i like it to be okay um so there's just there's a bit of an overview but if you want to see a bit of a deeper dive or me using it with different microphones then check that out so down the bottom we've got all the routing and the mixing section that's what i love about this the the revelator series the most so we've got a main mix, a stream mix, and stream mix B. So main mix is headphones, and that's just basically what I can hear. Um, 
Now, if you've got any changes you do in here, you know, you can't record this output. So this is a great thing because playback, maybe it's your game, you can turn it up louder, but on stream, you want it down a little bit quieter. Okay. Um, and then you've got Stream Mix B. So I'm actually recording with Stream Mix A into OBS. That's what I'd send to Stream. Stream Mix B is what you would send to chat because you don't want to be sending game sounds and music and you don't want to be replaying them their voice back. Um, so you don't want to be sending that sort of stuff. So I'll just show you sort of an example here. So at the moment, as you can see, we're set to playback. You can see we've got some audio. But then we could switch that to something else. So if we go to the mixer settings that's built into windows we can then say the output device if we went to where is it so we've got virtual b i'm going to do for some reason i got both so let's just do both and now you can see we've got the the music coming in on virtual b and it's pre it's pretty much the same setup for zoom and stuff like that so zoom teams discord all of that i'll set to stream mix b generally i have games coming through on playback i have music on virtual output a um, and then, you know, I set virtual B for the, for the voice chat coming back in. There's just a brief little overview for anyone that doesn't really know anything about the IO series, the 44, the 24, or even the microphones, if you're interested. But like I said, there's links to all of the latest guides in the description of this video for anyone that wants to know a little bit more and, and tweak settings a little bit more. There's also one extra thing that I forgot to mention as well, which is super cool, which I'm not going to show here today, but I show in my Revelator dynamic video is that with the included Studio One software, you can record audio into that. And then it actually has this fat channel built in from there. You can then just obviously record something, dial in all these settings, how you want it to be, and then you can export it and import it into any of the Revelator devices, which is awesome. That's some ways that I've nailed down certain frequencies and certain things I don't like about microphones because then I can just record my voice for a couple of minutes and tweak it afterwards. Anyway, if you've got any questions about this audio interface, um, I will probably come back with some more videos on it. Um, do let me know in the comments section. Um, initial impressions, I really like it. My only problem, and I have turned the camera off so I can't explain is, I really wish this screen was more to the front and not at the top of the device because I'm already seeing now as it's further away on my desk, I can't see what's on that screen at all. I'm almost having to look right over at it as in if it was under the volume control knob, I would be able to see it um, where it's sat under my monitor. So that's my only complaint. But other than that, it's just basically a super compact IO24 with some really cool little features on it. I love that it's got a line input. Love that it's got a headset input. Going to stop waffling now anyway. You know me, I can never finish a video. Make sure you subscribe and I'll be back with some more content very soon.